What's going on everyone? I'm going to welcome you to Amazon FBA Advertising 101. In this video, we're going to be talking about how to advertise on Amazon. I'm going to be giving you a complete overview of how it works, what you need to do to get set up. So please stick around if you want to know more about that. First things first, and before we get into any sort of techie stuff on optimization, different sorts of strategies, if your product listing looks like this. <coughs> then I actually forbid you from taking action on anything I'm going to talk about in this video. Seriously, I'm not joking. If your listing does not have seven high quality images, with engaging infographics describing the product features, a fully optimized title, description, and really good, compelling, convincing, copywritten product features that are gonna convince customers to buy, then running any sort of advertising, paying potential customers to come and look at this terrible listing is not gonna do you any favors, and you're gonna be wasting money hand over fist sending people to this product listing because they're not going to buy it they're going to click away and your advertising costs are going to be sky high and you're just going to get frustrated trust me on this one seriously the amount of money that i've just saved you with low converting advertising go and spend that money on sites like fiverr and find yourself some graphic designers that can get you some really high quality decent looking images and infographics and then take your time to do your keyword research and fully optimize all of your titles, all of your product description and all of your product features. You will thank me later on that one, I promise you. If you need any more help on that, please drop me a comment below and I will do my best to try and help you out. As always, if you're enjoying the video, please hit like, please hit subscribe. It does really help the channel. You stick classy. As I've mentioned before, we do also sell products for other companies as well as our own products. And if you are interested in partnering up, you've got a couple products that you want us to have a look at and manage maybe, please drop me a comment or drop me a direct message on Instagram and we can talk about that. So with that out of the way, let's now assume that your product listing is looking absolutely fine. Your images are on point. Title is nicely keyword optimized. You've got your keywords in the back end. You've got your product features, very compelling, intriguing, convincing and it's enticing customers to want to buy your product. <laughs> then you're just about ready to start with your first Amazon advertising campaign. So there's two main options when you first start advertising on Amazon. These are literally one of two routes. That is the automatic campaign and the manual campaign. So the automatic campaign is basically what it says on the tin. Amazon will automatically run an advertising campaign using the keywords, the product category, and everything that you've put in your product listing. It will then look at that and run advertising on competing products and search terms that it thinks are relevant to your product to convert potential customers into buyers. So it's gonna try and do all the work for you which in theory sounds great sometimes automatic campaigns can be good they're fundamentally really good for getting data but essentially you just want to be careful and i wouldn't really run them for very long because once you've got all your data you're going to look back through it and see what terms have performed really well what adverts have performed po poorly and then you're going to be able to optimize it and adjust your spend bids and targeting on each thing as you see fit. But fundamentally, you've got to sort of think of the advertising on Amazon as a real long game approach. It doesn't happen straight away. You're not just going to start running ads and just make huge amounts of profit straight away unless your product is absolutely revolutionary, which in most cases with private label, it probably isn't going to be unless you've developed something yourself. But even then, you want to sort of really set aside about 500 to 1,000 pounds in your mind that you're probably going to have to spend on advertising straight away before you really start to build traction. Because there's an amount of cost that you're going to need to spend in order to get the data that's required to optimize your product and its advertising for future. I've probably spoken a little bit too quick there, 
So that's automatic campaigns. The other option is a manual campaign, which is where you're gonna actually manually input different keywords, different product listings, and different filters that you're gonna to wanna to run advertising on. The more difficult thing with manual campaigns is obviously you're gonna to have to manually find the keywords and the products that you wanna run advertising on yourself, which if you know what you're doing is quite easy to do. There are certain tools out there like Helium 10 and Jungle Scout, which I'll leave some links in the description to below, which will help you with finding those keywords. But for beginners, and maybe just because you're starting off with your first product, the Amazon automatic campaign does work quite well, especially if you just run this for about 10 to 10 days to two weeks to just get your first batch of data. So for this video, let's just assume that you're gonna take that approach. As always, if you've got any questions, please drop me a comment below. I will do some more videos about the Amazon advertising, strategies, PPC campaigns, optimization, and all that sort of thing. But I just need to sort of get one out of the way first, just to try and give you a bit of an overview of how it works, because obviously people watching this are always gonna be at different levels. So if we start off at the basics, then hopefully everyone's gonna be able to rise up, grow, and we'll all learn stuff together. So to set up an automatic campaign, the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is go into your Seller Central dashboard, click on Campaign Manager, and then create a new campaign. This is gonna take you to this page here. And you're essentially just gonna to wanna to click Sponsored Products, hit Continue, name your campaign i would recommend just actually calling it auto campaign the name of your product so obviously the preston regis cutthroat which we'll use as an example preston regis cutthroat auto and then the date leave that at the end because that's going to come into play later on when we start to look at some of the data start date daily budget this does sort of depend, especially on what sort of category you're selling your product into, how competitive it is, and how many volumes you're looking to sell each day to get onto the first place of page one. But for this example, we'll just set a budget of 40 pounds a day. Automatic targeting, Amazon will target keywords and products that are similar to the products in your ad. Campaign strategy, I would recommend using dynamic dynamic bids down basically dynamic bids up is when amazon will raise the bid by a maximum of 100 percent to make sure that your product is shown on the top of page one this is great but it's easier in my opinion to just have down so it if it doesn't think if amazon doesn't think that your product is going to convert into the sale it will just lower the bid and it also means that for example if you set your bid at two pounds and the top competitor has set their bid at £1.50, you won't pay £2, you'll pay like one fifty one or whatever to get ranked top. Add group name, you just want to copy that. And then add the product that you want to enter your campaign with. So that is the Preston Regis Cutthroat. Default bid. When it comes to setting the bids, when you're running a manual campaign, you can essentially go in directly and adjust the bids for each individual keyword. But because this is an automatic campaign, it works a little bit differently. Now, I usually just set a bid of say £1.50 and that will just run for all of the advertisements that the automatic targeting will run for. You really wanna just check back on this like maybe two days later and just see what your spend is because if you're running an advertising campaign and it isn't spending any money, you could have a daily budget of 3,000 pounds, but if all your bids are too low, then you're never actually gonna even see an impression or generate a click in which you're gonna to have to pay for. So you might have this massive advertising budget, but if all your bids are too low, then no one's, you're never actually gonna rise up to the sponsored listings point above other people that are bidding and be shown for a customer to potentially click and buy. 
So just bear that in mind. So we'll set £1.50 to start off with. The other option you can do is the set the bids by the targeting group, which will basically mean if it's something close, really close to your product, name, keyword, etc., then you're going to might bid a little bit more. If it's a little looser or it's different, then you could bid a bit less. But usually I'll just set default bid for, other, for the automatic campaigns. Negative keyword targeting. This is very important and does come into play, but not until you've got your first batch of data in the first place. So just keep it in mind, but for now, we'll just skim over that. And that's essentially it. Launch that campaign. Congratulations, your campaign is launched. So that is the first real step. So once your automatic campaign is set up, you're going to leave that for 14 days and then you're going to go into advertising reports, generate a report, search term report, wait for that to populate and then hit download. That's going to give you an Excel document of basically all the data that's been generated from that two weeks into an advertising report, which you can then manipulate, look at and start to see where you're performing well, where you aren't performing well, and how you're gonna start optimizing those campaigns. So to try and speed this up as much as possible, I've basically just pulled an old advertising report for the Preston Regis Cutthroat Raises, which you can guys can have a look at. I'll show you some of the things that I sort of look for when I first start to optimize a campaign, and hopefully that'll help you out a little bit. So basically, this is sort of the thing that you're gonna find when you download your report going to give you the start date, the end date of when that report was generated, the name, the currency, whether it was a manual campaign, whether it was an automatic campaign, the ad group, the targeting, what the match type was. There's three different match types. There's phrase, exact and broad. Exact is basically exactly what it says it is. It's exactly what you type in. Cut, throat, razor. That's an exact term. A broad match might be like straight throat straight throat razor or straight edge razor broads are generally a little bit cheaper but you can use broads campaigns to try and find out words which you didn't really know in the first place which might rank and be really profitable for your advertising campaigns so it's certainly something to bear in mind but what you want to prioritize is your exact match keywords so looking at the targeting what you'll see is that where there's a little star, that basically means that that's been an automatic campaign. So this, these here are actually ASINs of other competing products, which Amazon has thought less advertised the cutthroat on this product because we think it might be relevant. It might convince the buyer to come away from that product onto ours and purchase. So that's how that's what these ASINs are. And if you type these ASINs into Amazon, you'll actually see what the product is which is quite interesting. Obviously, we can look through these the same way as we look for everything else to try and determine which is gonna give us the highest return on advertising spend. So the first thing that I usually do is I will select the entire table. I'll right click, sort, custom sort, sort by, Total seven day sales, largest to smallest, as that is our most important metric. So as you can see, our best selling, which was a, which resulted in £169.90 in sales, was the exact search term cut throat razor. We said a 1.3% click through rate, we paid 77 pence per click. We spent £65 on advertising and that returned us £170 in sales, which gave us a total advertising cost of sale of 38.7%. Now, the total advertising cost of sale is something that you really do need to bear in mind because that's essentially the cost of the retail price that you have spent on advertising to acquire that sale. So say that your product was a £10 retail price and you spent three pounds on advertising to acquire that sale, you had an ACOS of 30% because 30% of 10 pounds is three. And that's how much you spent on advertising. Keep this in mind based on your, what your profit margin is, because if your profit margin 
is 40% and your ACOS is 30%, your real profit margin on that sale is only 10%. And this is something that you want to keep in mind when you first launch your products because your ACOS is typically going to be a lot higher because you haven't got as many reviews and you haven't got as much authority in that space yet. Over time, as you gain more reviews, you're generally your click through rate and your conversion rate is going to start to get a lot higher because of the social proof of other people reviewing your product. People automatically think this product's got over a hundred reviews. It's four and a half star rated. I'm pretty confident that if I purchase this product, it's going to do well. You will get some people that are a bit more risky and they might take their chance on products with two to 10 reviews, but you don't need me to tell you that you're going to be more convinced with a product with higher reviews than you are with less. So over time, just think your advertising cost of sale will reduce. But at the end of the day, you've got to think about how much money you're prepared to lose at the start in order to make that sale. And there's certain optimization tactics you can do to just sort of bring that A cost down while you're building up your reviews which we will talk about either in this video or other videos. Honestly, I've seen courses that gurus are selling for 500 to a thousand pound that don't even scratch the surface on some of this basic sort of level of advertising optimization. So if you think this video is giving you some good value and you're enjoying it, please drop me a like and a comment and hit subscribe if you haven't done already and tick that notification bell so you'll be notified the next time I produce an absolute banger of a video. <laughs> so let's get back into it then. Now by sorting everything by the sales, it gives us a clear view of what search terms are providing us with the biggest results, but they're not necessarily the most profitable search terms. As you can see by the cutthroat razor set with blades, which we're actually paying a total advertising cost to sale of 50%. And this isn't actually very relevant of a term because our product is actually sold without blades. So that potentially might be why the advertising cost of sale is higher, but it has still generated us a sale. This ACE in here is obviously standing out to me because this looks like a product that is probably going to be inferior to ours. So it's going to be a good idea to run advertising on this product in the future. It's got a very high return on advertisement spend of 16, which is pretty unbelievable, and a very low total advertising cost of sale. Basically, what I'm going to do is look through all of these. I'm going to highlight which keywords I think are really good and ones that I want to keep, and I'm going to highlight them in green. Obviously, we haven't made sales on every single keyword, so once you've got the ones that you are making sales on, I generally just look through and look at which ones have got a high click through rate. So really what you've got to remember, as I say again, you've not got many reviews at this point. You are just launching your product. This advertising report was from a couple of years ago when we did just launch a product. So people might be interested to click and have a look at your listing, but they're not going to be as convinced to buy if you haven't got the reviews. We know Amazon live and die by reviews. The more reviews you've got, the more sales and the more confidence customers are generally going to have in purchasing with you. So click through rate is a really good factor to look at. And generally, if it's above sort of 15%, then I'll usually tick it green and keep that for the future. So I'm just going to have a look through now. You would obviously do this yourself pretty quickly. But certain click through rates there, that's got a 50% click through rate, that's got a 50%, four, three. It's had a hundred, but it's only had one. This ace in here, pretty good. So what you can see I've done there is I've basically just gone through each search term, highlighting them green. If they're definitely making sales, they've got a high click through rate or they're incredibly relevant to the product, such as cutthroat razor kit with beard comb, for example. You really just need to use your own sort of interpretation a little bit, but just keep in mind some of the things I spoke about. So obviously some of these in red, we won't be using anymore. Some of these ASINs, which have got really low click through rates or some of the stuff like 
men's grooming that's such a wide term which isn't really as relevant to our product and at the moment we're probably going to be spending a lot of money in order on advertising in order to acquire customers from that keyword so essentially it's better off to just remove it you might be able to retest it again in the future when you've got a bit more authority and more reviews but for now stuff like that we're just going to get rid of obviously amazon will pull up some of these random things in the automatic campaign which is why they're not always the best but to start off with it gives you a really good set of data to start working with another example there travel set leather So once you've done this, what are you going to do with the green, yellow and reds? The reds, you're just going to leave them as they are. Just completely ignore them. Greens, we are going to select all the greens. And these are going to be used in our new manual exact match advertising campaign. I'm going to copy them. These will now go in here under exact match and all of the yellows we are going to create and add into a broad match campaign so once you've done that you're going to go back into your campaign manager and you're going to create a new campaign under sponsored products sponsored brand sponsored display I'll have to talk about that in some other videos because we probably aren't going to have time otherwise this is just going to go on forever. You are going to call this your product name as we did before dash exact the date that you have started the campaign budget keep it the same this time we're going to use manual targeting keep the bids down only copy and paste campaign name into the ad group select the product that we are going to use for advertising we are going to use keyword targeting and we're going to enter a list and we are going to make sure that our match type is exact only and we are then going to copy our entire list of exacts drop them into there, add keywords. So that is then going to drop all of your keywords in there for your exact match campaign. They're just duplicates. So once we've done that, we can then launch that campaign. We're then going to create a new campaign again, sponsored products, Cut razor, name of your product. This time broad match and save the date. Daily budget, set this a little bit less. We'll set this at say £25 because broad matching tends to be a little bit cheaper than exact. Manual targeting again, dynamic bids down. Let's copy and paste this into here. And then we are going to add our product, keyword targeting, enter list again. This time we want a broad match. So broad contains all the keywords in any order and includes plurals, variations or related keywords. That is what Amazon is going to be using these as a basis of and advertising them against. So we're then going to go into our Excel document, into the broad match category, select all of these. And then we are going to enter that list in there, add those keywords, set the budget, let's say £1.50 again. And then we can launch that campaign as well. Oh, not yet. So this is where negative keywords come in. Because what we're doing with this broad match is we're essentially asking Amazon to go out and look for some new keywords that we might be able to run advertising on that's going to be profitable. So it's going to use all of those as a basis. But what we don't want it to do is to compete 
with our other advertising campaign of exact match terms because otherwise we're going to be competing against each other and Amazon is going to be making loads of money and we won't. So what we need to do is we need to tell Amazon to look for a load of new keywords but to ignore all of the exact match terms that we've used in our other ad campaign. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go back to the green exact match terms. We're going to copy them. We're going to drop them into the negative keyword, negative exact. Take out the duplicates. Don't know why it's done that. And then we'll launch that campaign. Now we've got two campaigns running. We've got the exact match campaign, which is looking at all of our terms that we know are going to be our best performing. And we've got a broad match term that's going to be running for all new keywords, which we can then analyze later on. What I'd recommend you do is you go and check these each day. You will want to manually update the bids because if Amazon isn't spending any money on each search term, then you're going to need to increase that bid in order to be seen. Otherwise, you're not going to get the data you're going to need to analyze and optimize it in the future. You can then basically use this strategy, which is probably one of the most basic strategies when it comes to advertising on Amazon. You can just use this again and again, just until you really nail down what keywords are going to be your best. As you slowly build up reviews, your advertising cost of sales is going to reduce. You can start to increase the bids on certain more competitive keywords and essentially just continue to run this, try and find new words, try and find new products, competing products that you can run ads on, all that sort of stuff. So that sort of sums it up. I hope that's been helpful to everyone. I know there's probably going to be quite a few questions because I've tried to run this through as quickly as possible, but it's essentially one of the most fundamental and easiest strategies to grasp and should hopefully enable everyone to sort of get some good results from Amazon advertising without just wasting loads of money. Um, drop me a comment if you've got any questions. If you found this video useful, please drop me a like and subscribe to the channel. Um, if you've got any questions, if you want to maybe work together in terms of Amazon account management or whatever, please drop me a message on Instagram. I hope to see you all again soon and thank you very much for watching.